to determine who gets what, when, and how. Yeah, and it, it determines. You know, the resources are scarce, but politics is really what determines the distribution of those scarce resources. That is of exactly what brings in the men. The men, I think, from time immemorial, realize, and of course, they took domination of the same. Women have been there to give labor. Yeah, they they do not decide what happens to to um, the production of their labor. It is now that women have realized we cannot continue to be the laborers without having a word on what happens to what we produce through our labor. Uh, given my experiences in in politics, uh, we've seen a transition. We've come from a highly centralized system of governance where the discussion was based among a group of men and uh, very little discussions was done by to the civil society or the community at large. And we have seen a transition now to where there's a lot of consultation in society. But uh, again, women have not fared very well for the same reason as uh, Paris has been saying that um, men have been in the forefront. And this is this is this comes from tradition, where the public arena was the arena for the men, and the women were supposed to be in the private arena. So we've been taking care of the families, but to some point, with the increase in education system exposure, you'd find that the women are actually the ones managing the families, despite the fact that men are taking up leadership in politics, but the women are actually running families. And women decided if we can run our homes, so can we take up leadership and run the country. The women have done extremely well in terms of leadership, in terms of development, and being the majority in in in, in terms of population, I don't see a reason why the majority should not be able to be part and parcel of development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I believe personally. If I'm paying taxes to this country, mm -hmm. then I have every right to take up leadership and determine where my taxes are going to be utilized. Mm -hmm. Politics is where it's really the rule of governance mm -hmm. and of how to govern the country. Mm -hmm. And just to add on to what they've said, in terms of it will actually determine how, where, when these resources are actually distributed. Because we've, we, we've not been in that space before. And we've seen that part of the problem that we have encountered right uh, up until this point are because we've actually not been at the table where resources are decided how it is they're going to be distributed. Mm -hmm. So things that affect women, that are pertinent to us, that are important to us, things like maternal health, um, you know, and, and children, and, um, and, and, and mortality rates, and what goes, you know, to children. Mm -hmm. Those are not things that actually become priorities. But other things then become priority because the way a man would look at how the money needs to be distributed, even in a home, mm -hmm. it is a woman who will say, you know, certain things the children need this, and certain things mm -hmm. need to go to the kitchen budget, things that ordinarily a man would think are irrelevant or are not important. So what we are saying is, we have not been at the table where those resources uh, where discussion on how these resources are going to be distributed are done, mm -hmm. and because of that, we have ended up being um, we have ended up being forgotten. Okay. So we have ended up suffering because of that. So what we are saying is, we want to be at that table. We want to be there that when they are being distributed, our interests are also catered for. The people also listen to what it is women have to say, and where do they want those resources to be distributed for us to get a chance? And if politics is the way and it's the place that it's going to be done, then we are going to be done. You see women are doing so much out there, but you see what this political power, mm -hmm. and when you have the political power, mm -hmm. you are uh, you are leveraged to a level where you are able to come up with policies that will protect your interests. Women are not on that level where they can articulate policies mm -hmm. that affect their interests properly. Mm -hmm. So as we continue doing development work down here, mm -hmm. some of us need to be up there to be on the policy level to guard and protect our people. That's why political power is very important for women as well. This one Tutu was asked, uh, how do we read, uh, get rid of corruption mm -hmm. and uh, wars in Africa? Mm -hmm. He said, if you want to bring peace to Africa mm -hmm. and you want to get rid of corruption, mm -hmm. then put women in leadership. I think 
um, the issue comes from the socialization, you know, that has been there. Mm. The women have sort of, you know, it's like we have actually been put through from childhood eh? oppression, yeah. oppression yeah. To, to an extent Oppressed. that we we have very actually private. found it uh, very normal to play second fiddle. Mm. You know yes. that um, if it is chairman of the electoral commission that is being looked out for, mm. we know most probably I might a woman might be allowed to deputize, mm. but mm. not to be the chair. Mm -hmm. Women do not fear to be vetted. No. Mm -hmm. This new process of vetting, the mm -hmm. way it has been done, mm -hmm. is not a normal process of vetting. Because mm -hmm. it, it, it comes out so clearly that um, there is a process of exposing somebody in a negative way. And in a proper vetting, mm -hmm. ideally most professionals would make it, will make it through, whether you, you, you get the position or not, but they would be there. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. the other side of vetting that women have gone through and they don't fear mm -hmm. is us. Mm. We have been vetted by the regular Mananchi. Mm. When you look at the qualifications that are being asked mm. about some of those things and the level of education for some of those positions, mm. we need to remember mm. that in, 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 you know, for time past, women were not being educated as much as men. Mm -hmm. Same thing that I talk about the patriarchal society, mm. where you have children in your household, but you educate the boy and the girl may not go to school and even if she does but mm. under five she'll not ever actually you know she'll never finish her primary education she'll never maybe get to finish her secondary education and even if she does she'll never go to the university because the father will sell his cows to take the boys to school mm. so that the women who have actually even managed to reach that level of qualification that are being asked mm. by some of these commissions mm. are extremely high mm. when you're asking uh, when you're asking people who have actually not lived in an equal society mm. where the girl child is actually not educated to the same level as a boy child. Mm -hmm. So it would be wrong for us to imagine that for the last 47 years, the women and the men in this country mm -hmm. have actually had the you know, same opportunities mm -hmm. that have been given mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. So of course it is already unfair mm -hmm. from that particular standing mm -hmm. to expect, you know, because we know they wanted for the chief justice, mm -hmm. there were very few women who have attended. Mm -hmm. You know, so by, by virtue of that, we would go for the deputy. Mm -hmm. And by all others, because then you're finding less and less women mm -hmm. are applying for this position. Mm -hmm. You see, so let's be fair. And that's what I'm saying. If, mm -hmm. if let's be fair to this country. Let's reverse that process because for 47 years men have had it in a certain way. So let's say from now henceforth, mm -hmm. let's start from here and then give women the next 47 years also be on the same equal footing. Mm -hmm. And then from there we can now say we're going to have an equal country. Yeah. Yeah. But let's not have qualifications that are being put on the paper mm -hmm. that are naturally going to favor a man anyway. But he doesn't mm -hmm. even need to work so hard, they are naturally going to favor <laughs> <him>. <laughs>
we campaign a larger region mm -hmm. and, and not even have a kitty to do any program for that county. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, was, I would suggest that we go through the party list and every woman would have an opportunity to get on the, on the, on the party list through their party, even if the party is small, because once the party garners a seat or two, mm -hmm. then the women on the list have an opportunity uh, to, to be on board. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that women get in first and learn the tricks and get the experience. Mm -hmm. Now, once we have that um, critical mass in Parliament, we may be able to inform policy, as Pauline has been talking about. Mm -hmm. We may be able to change some laws mm -hmm. as a large number. Okay. Maybe not all of us will get in there because party have their own ways of playing their own politics too. You may mm -hmm. think it is easy to get on a party list, mm -hmm. but you may find some games that are being played. Some of most of us who have been in political parties know that. Mm -hmm. You, you have to invest in a party for you to be able to be relevant. Mm -hmm. And that is the one thing that a lot of women need to emphasize on. Mm -hmm. Women do not have the funds to run an election. So going on the ground, it means you have to look for resources. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's a, a, a total loss in itself because the community is not ready yet to look at a woman as a leader. As we've already been discussing, we are looked as mothers, we can be managers, we can, but not in terms of leadership. Mm -hmm. I don't have so much faith in political parties, especially the main ones. Mm -hmm. Because definitely, if you've not been a, a very friendly woman or very close to this party, whatever, mm -hmm. you might not even be there in, in the neck. You might not, uh, you might not be anywhere. But what we want is, mm -hmm. if the party list can bring the women to parliament, mm -hmm. we don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Let them bring anybody whom they want. But we should also have the, the, the women who will come, no matter what political party, mm -hmm. as long as they have the ground. Mm -hmm. If the party is a cold a dog or a what, mm -hmm. but they can make it to parliament, we also need such women. Okay. So I don't have a problem with the, the, the party list. It is better than the county, those county red, because I, I don't want that. that <laughs> because definitely it is a seat for women to be abused. Because when you go to that parliament, mm -hmm. And you wake up to talk, mm -hmm. you'll be told to talk about women, mm -hmm. not men, because mm -hmm. you were brought here by women. Mm -hmm. I mean, political parties are still <coughs> headed by the same guys men. we call it men, mm -hmm. who we say for whatever reason they have marginalized women. So I'm, I'm not sure really, I want to uh, support the scrapping of uh, the women reps, mm -hmm. Particularly because if the goal is to increase the number of women at decision-making level, mm -hmm. then why not still have several alternatives? Mm -hmm. We can have women from the ground. Mm -hmm. We can have women from the party mm -hmm. at, the, at the end of it, we can say we have a critical mass of women. The, it, it is boxing women to a corner. Mm -hmm. That now we are supposed to leave the constituencies alone. We all go fight for this 47 slot. Mm -hmm. So finally, it, it will actually even reduce the number of women. Mm -hmm. it, it is not encouraging the women to go for constituency mm -hmm. seats. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, politics is about perception. Mm -hmm. Now, there's this perception why are they coming to fight the men on this constituency? Whatever. Two, about the, the, the 47 county seats. It, I do not know how the woman will meet the expectations of the electorate thereafter. Mm. You mm. will get into parliament mm. the first time round, mm. but because there is mm. no kitty attached to that seat, I do not know how you are going to meet the expectations mm. of the electorate as far as development is concerned. Mm. You will be there, a, a, a member of parliament without portfolio. Mm. That's mm. what it looks like. Mm. Uh, personally, I wouldn't go for that seat. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think party mm -hmm. is the way to go because now parties will be forced yes. to map out the strong women. Mm -hmm. In fact, personally, I'm very comfortable because I know as long as I'm, I'm at the ground, mm -hmm. yes. they will look for me. Yeah. Because then they will want a woman who can win a seat for them. Exactly. The women movement has also done a lot of work in the country mm -hmm. of sensitizing the, I mean, 
the whole country about the leadership of women, mm -hmm. also those women who are in parliament mm -hmm. and those who are in parliament, mm -hmm. the work they are doing on the ground is a landmark okay. for other women okay. leaders, okay. for even men to appreciate mm -hmm. women being in leadership. Mm -hmm. This revolution is happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. One, it is happening mm -hmm. in the home, mm -hmm. where a lot of homes right now are being run by women. Uh, without men there. Mm -hmm. So of course women are realizing if you can run a home, mm -hmm. then you can run in their rest. It is also happening in the corporate front, mm -hmm. where women are now, you know, executives in the boardroom. Mm -hmm. Whereas some years back, 15, 20 years ago, there was no, you know, women were not at the executive level. Mm -hmm. So many women are now rising up the corporate ladder and realizing, you know, we can sit at the boardroom, they can be executive managers, managing directors, heads of big, you know, corporates. Um, so, so, so it's also happening there. So once women take over the home mm -hmm. and the corporate front, mm -hmm. really the next place for them to take over really is the government, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the political front. Mm -hmm. Women realize they have to be decisive. Yes. I mean, they have to take action. What they have seen, what they have witnessed, what they have experienced mm -hmm. at the hands of men leadership mm -hmm. really needs to be faced and something needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Observation one, mm. women really have been decisive and decided to go for it. Mm. Two, mm. The, the men leadership really have brought the violence mm. and just to bring it contextually home. Mm. The men leadership has seen our country almost gone to death. Mm -hmm. So even the men themselves mm. I'm sure they want an alternative <laughs> leadership. <laughs> and that alternative leadership can only be brought by the woman. I have a bit of experience in post-conflict countries. Okay. And I've been in Sudan for the last one whole year. Mm -hmm. So I have seen um, the difference between countries that go through conflict and then being uh, in Kenya. Mm -hmm. The situation in, in uh, Rwanda is different. Mm -hmm. um, after the genocide, mm -hmm. there was a lot of women left behind, yes. and the women played a major role in terms of mm -hmm. rebuilding uh, families and, and the communities. Mm -hmm. And then again, there was political goodwill from uh, President Kagame. Mm -hmm. He's the one who actually supported the initiative of getting women on board. Mm -hmm. So political goodwill is very important. Mm -hmm. Their experience was very different from us. Mm -hmm. So that is, that's why you saw the leadership of women are moving forward. A lot of uh, the Rwandese from the diaspora were welcome back home. So there was a lot of investment into the women who are back home, the women who played a role in terms of rebuilding society again. So there are two dynamics here. The political goodwill and the experiences of the country. Similar situation in southern Sudan. They had been in war for 21 years. That saw a lot of men being killed and the women played a major role in the fight for liberation in South Sudan. Okay. During the referendum, mm. the president himself mm. called out on the women mm. to deliver the nation during the referendum. Mm -hmm. You see, the president knew the power of women to organize and mobilize. So he called upon the women, and the women actually delivered almost 98.9% of the referendum, and today Southern Sudan is a liberated nation. Mm. Now, during the CPA, mm. The SPLM realized the role that women are playing and they negotiated for 25% quota mm -hmm. of women representation in parliament. Mm -hmm. Today the women of southern Sudan are actually enjoying the fruits of their labor. Mm -hmm. Now that's a totally different experience, a very positive one indeed. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, 2007 was neither a war, mm -hmm. neither a conflict of that magnitude. <laughs> yeah? However, for us it was something that was shaking us because we've never been through that. Mm -hmm. We lack the political goodwill. Mm -hmm. We actually lack the political goodwill. All we need mm -hmm. is the leadership of the country to push the women's agenda. Mm -hmm. Just like Kagame did, mm -hmm. just like the way Salva Kiir did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, to me, the bottom line is there's no political goodwill in Kenya. So, this time around, I think when women come out, we better push for presidency mm -hmm. that will support women leadership. Mm -hmm. The devolved government is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of challenges, but let's get there. We shall know how to deal with it once later.
Look at Bangladesh. Look at India. Mm -hmm. Look at Pakistan. Mm -hmm. You go to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Who are the leaders? Mm -hmm. These are not superpowers. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be a superpowers to, mm -hmm. to support women leadership or to be able to bring about change. The countries you're talking about, Western countries, they are more patriarchal mm -hmm. than what we think. Mm -hmm. That is why to date you still see America does not, has never had a woman president. Mm -hmm. But you've seen Sierra Leone here, Liberia here, mm -hmm. has a Johnson Sunday. Mm -hmm. you, you, you saw Pakistan, the late Benazir Bhutto. Mm -hmm. uh, you see yeah. India, mm -hmm. Bangladesh, mm -hmm. uh, where I was actually observing elections and I observed two strong women. Mm -hmm. As Prime Minister, two strong women. Mm -hmm. The way we look around at PNU and ODM here mm. is exactly what Bangladeshis were doing. Mm. And I was amazed. I was like, these are actually Muslim societies mm. which have risen above that gender issue. Mm. So the Western uh, countries, are, we won't even be looking there, actually. Yeah. We should not even be looking mm. there. Mm. We'll be looking in a different direction now. Mm. And there we'll be looking into the direction of the, the third world countries and see where leadership of women coming from. My first agenda will be inclusion, inclusion of everybody in terms, you know, let, let, let uh, leadership also become consultative, let leadership also be involving for everybody. I, I would want us to do away with the dictatorial past of the leader being the boss. You know, I mean, you will not even call him a leader, you will call him a ruler. I, I would want us to get rid of rulers and bring me on leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, leaders who will involve, who will consult, leaders who will go by consensus, leaders who will be sensitive to really the community needs, mm -hmm. sensitive to what the youth are saying, mm -hmm. sensitive to what the women are saying. Mm -hmm. so, you know, a, a sort of leadership that is communicating with the public. Repeal of the Irrigation Act will liberate the Moya farmers. You cannot use a law that oppresses, I mean, or oppresses people and you legitimize, you, you legitimize your actions with the law. You can abuse, you can steal, you can corrupt, you can kill, you can do all manner sort of human rights violations using a law. The Irrigation Act basically states it like this. Women cannot own land. Children must leave the rice growing area after 18 years of age. I don't know to where. I mean, the law states that you cannot keep animals, you cannot build permanent houses, you basically cannot challenge an irrigation manager. You oppose what they are saying, tomorrow you are out of the land. Mm. So in as much as we want to be leaders, we must bring the people together. Okay. If we are empowering the woman, we must empower the man. I come from a culture that actually naturally mm. empowers men. Mm. Naturally. Mm. From birth, <laughs> they are already <laughs> empowered. So they cannot be empowered further than how the <laughs> culture has already socialized them to be. Mm. So one of the things that I would be fighting for is the girl child education because girls do not ordinarily go to school and even if they do, mm -hmm. they will drop out at some point. They might not even reach, you know, they might not even finish primary school education. Mm -hmm. So they will have to drop out at some point. So of course it will be making sure that girls go to school and stay in school. Mm -hmm. And how I would want, in fact this is what I would push for, mm -hmm. I believe in Parliament. Because you go to many, you know, even public toilets and you find condoms for free, but you don't find sanitary towels for free. I, I don't know why, <laughs> you know. So, so, so boys are allowed to continue doing whatever business it is they do, but girls, because of their genetic makeup, we are already made to, to feel, yes. So a lot of the girls, of course, would, would drop out, even not even because of adolescence. You know, that is one of the things they are dropping out for, but many other things. But I would want sanitary towels to be free. If this government can provide condoms for free, mm -hmm. this government is capable of providing sanitary towels for free. Mm -hmm. We are very many industries. Mm -hmm. 
we produce a lot of milk. In fact, I think we produce the most milk in this country. Mm -hmm. But if you look, that's all we produce, the milk. Whereas when you look at in other uh, areas and communities, mm -hmm. they don't just produce the milk. They produce the butter, they produce the ghee. You know, they add value to that product. Now, I do not know why it is. We stick with our KCC mm -hmm. and we don't want to think beyond producing other products. That can be, you know, that can add value to the milk. We have so much milk. We actually produce this country with milk because I doubt Central or the other places. The milk they produce is for Nairobi, but we are producing for the country, mm. so we can put value so that we can even export this product. Remember, we have an international airport yeah. in my constituency, but we are exporting nothing. You see, so why is it for politicians? Yes, yes. You see, so so we have butter that is coming in from New Zealand, and I don't yeah. know where it is the supermarket, but we cannot even export our own milk. Or, you know, all those products in this country. Same thing even to do with maize. We are the bread basket of this country, but that is all. We do not have the millers in our place. When the millers are sitting in Mombasa, mm. and then they will go and watafini, maindi, wakongoe, alafu watuzie sisi kama unga. You know, millers want to come Mombasa. And from Mombasa it has been exported into South Sudan and Rwanda. Why aren't the millers in our place? So we have to think beyond mm. just producing that raw material, but actually adding value to that material, so that then it will make money for us. The way the road has been made a bit easier for ourselves too, before even you guys. Mm -hmm. There are people like Mama Phoebe Asio who has been yes. there before, the grace of God, the grace of God. Mm -hmm. there's Charity Ngilu and Martha. These are the women who actually made the road a bit smoother and us mm -hmm. came a little bit on the way. And now we have to make it clear for the younger mm -hmm. ones yourselves. The reason we voted, voted for a devolved system because we did not want to be centralized. Mm -hmm. So we did not vote for a devolved political system mm -hmm. and not uh, um, a financial uh, system. system. We, we, we we voted for a proper devolved system. system of government. So we need yes. to take, uh, tell our people that yes. it is very important to understand that when we are devolving, we are devolving everything. everything. Yeah. everything. But we are not going to devolve politically and then delegate yeah. financially. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That yes. is not acceptable yes. to the I people agree. of Kenya. Yes. Mm. The reason we voted, we voted against a highly centralized system. Yes. Mm. So don't devolve us politically mm. and leave the finances in the center. Yes. Mm. Yeah. The finances also need to devolve. So, yeah. This big thing of corruption mm -hmm. is what is removing the development of the funds mm -hmm. back to the center. Mm -hmm. And that is the same reason mm -hmm. why we are going to be paying a larger debt to inter multinationals. Mm -hmm. Because some people are, ga are gaining out of this centralized system that yes. is controlling uh, mm -hmm. resources. resources. Yes. So corruption again is another thing yes. that women uh, leaders will have to tackle it or yeah, head I on. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. And because that is what is killing us, that yeah. is what is killing our industries, that is mm. what is killing our young people, mm. that is what is putting us in debt mm. for the next millennium. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. I am in debt today, not because yeah. I wanted to. Because you are yeah. 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 No, and it's actually yeah. Let's not pretend that corruption will not be there. It will be there. But when we devolve it, it's in a lower magnitude. Mm was a V central government where it is a big magnitude. I mean, I've had the privilege for the last six months mm -hmm. to go around the country mm -hmm. in major cities, mm -hmm. and my theme has been simple. Mm -hmm. How has your life changed mm -hmm. since the promulgation of the Constitution, one year after? Mm -hmm. Everybody says they, they haven't really <laughs> seen any change. Mm -hmm. Just to bring out what they say, mm -hmm. They say they, they don't understand why mm. they were asked to vote in a constitution. Mm. And they can see major changes, mm. amendments to that constitution, and they are not being consulted. Mm. So the need for consultation yeah. really is there. Mm. Perhaps maybe to recommend that we really need a lot of massive education to the classes.